I'm Bob Geller. I'm president of Fusion PR. We're a PR and digital communications firm focusing on the technology sector, primarily B2B customers in a broad range of technology areas from finance, fintech, uh, ad tech, um, general enterprise, cybersecurity, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, many other types of technologies, telecommunications and wireless. And we primarily focus on the startup, companies that are looking to get out there, establish themselves, launch and grow. PR spans many different channels these days. Think of all the ways we communicate. Think of how communications has changed. So we have several aspects. One is paid media, and you would think paid might be the province more of advertising. But in publications these days, increasingly, we are using paid channels, meaning if you pay to have an article run as native advertising, that could be considered to be PR. Earned media is getting back to the mainstay of PR, media relations, getting coverage in the media. And then there's own media, which is your own channels, your blog, your website, and shared media is uh, what some would probably consider mostly social media channel, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Those are a few of the examples of the channels involved in PR these days. Pride ourselves in the fact that we're an agency comprised of geeks that can actually communicate, which may seem to be pretty typical, but it's not. Uh, you know, if you're in communications and focusing on highly technology sectors, sadly, many agencies don't have that technology expertise. I'm a former engineer. The agency is built up of um, subject matter experts from different areas as well as tech marketing folks. We pride ourselves in being able to walk the walk, talk the talk. I'd say, I mean, that's, you know, probably the chief differentiator, but it's also important these days to be very creative, proactive, and innovative in your communications because as you might imagine, it's a very noisy world these days, it's hard to get attention. You know, everyone is looking for that growth hack, that, that trick, uh, the viral success, and unfortunately it's not so easy to plan those and order them up and make them happy, um, especially in the B2B arena. So we find that, I mean, it's great if you can have those things, you can have that viral success, whether it's a press release or some kind of video, find that amazing growth hack that kind of um, jumpstarts your success. More often than not, though, it's a long campaign of being consistent, of using high quality content, media outreach, combined with knowing where your customers are. And as we mentioned earlier, that's changing these days, uh, where they find information. And then developing content, whether it's news, whether it's case studies, whether it's articles that appeal to the needs of your customers. That's a great question, and it's not always easy to know. I mean, there's no substitute for you know, direct contact with customers, primary information, whether it comes from the sales force or your experience in the field yourself. So it's kind of getting in the minds of the customer and trying to understand where their field is at today and where they're going, what needs drive their buying cycle, um, what problems come up in implementations. And then, for example, on a blog, one of the most popular types of posts is a, uh, a blog that addresses their pain points, the customer's pain points, in an educational way, not in a hard selling way and that encourages inbound to your website and hopefully a registration and hopefully a customer. The customers in the driver's seat these days, uh, they have so many choices when you think about it. They can change the channel, they go to a different website, they can, uh, you know, they're reading an article, they're distracted by their phone. Um, so you're not competing just with your competitor's news, you're competing with uh, baby pictures, you know, on Facebook. You're competing with the latest interruption and so you have to really be good and, and um, have content that really hits home. There's a couple I have in mind. One is for a company that's in predictive analytics for insurance. Insurance is a field that typically has been a laggard in technology. Um, we help this company do a good job as far as establishing themselves as thought leaders and innovators in that space through primarily byline content. So there's a small number of publications in that sector and we knew who they were. We made sure that the content was written to high standards, got placed consistently. And that combined with other tactics over time, I think uh, helped the company grow to the point where they were acquired by the giant in their space. Generally these days, uh, just the hard sell, either something that's very brand focused, it's not, again, not necessarily connecting with the needs of the customer. You know, it's much easier to find examples of things that don't work. Uh, We've all seen the content that is really uninteresting or looks spammy, clickbait, um, for sure in the tech sector and B2B tech. Being more about features, bits, bytes, speeds, and feeds rather than benefits, they're telling stories that can connect with customers. I don't know the exact number, but out of all the money spent in content marketing, out of all the contents produced, most of it goes completely ignored. <laughs> so 
you know, that shows what a challenge it is and what you need to do to be in that segment that doesn't get ignored. Visual content certainly helps, uh, whether it's images, whether it's videos. Um, there's evergreen content which stays relevant. You can reuse it um, in the kind of uh, text-based content. Trends change maybe three or four or five years ago. The clickbaity stuff did work. Now I think we're finding that authoritative long-form content, so-called cornerstone content, which may take longer, you can't crank it out at the same pace, but that provides much better results, combined with short, incisive articles that, that do hit home. Be relevant, be interesting, consistency and quality. Sure, you could try to plan for that wild success, uh, whether it's a viral hit or uh, some kind of growth hack. But in general, it's a long game building brand. And so you just need to have a campaign of regularly producing the content, whether it's news, whether it's uh, case studies, articles that hit the right channels where your customers are and that help you achieve your goals over time. A lot of startups are very engineering or tech driven. They might not understand marketing so well. They might not understand the power of brand. But think about it. I mean, most people buy, they want to do business with brands they respect, they know. Um, they don't focus on content that's not interesting. So it's, it's a combination of these things. And by look, focusing on the long game, I don't mean there can't be short-term wins. Certainly if there's a big press release, we're gonna go out there and pitch the hell out of it and try to get major league coverage, which hopefully will make them smile and it may you know, um, fill the sales pipeline. But in general, it takes a while. Think about it, you know, news today is quickly forgotten. And there's so much noise and competing news in the market that you need to be out there all the time, whether it's with news or with other types of proactive tactics that get your company in the news and mentioned and that your customers can see. There's a big debate of whether, whether PR is the right tool to drive um, sales. No question, especially when you expand the definition of PR and look at content marketing, which in turn, of course, can mean inbound marketing, that it can be used to drive sales, absolutely. So we had a client, um, in fact, we still have them today, that focuses on a solution in the enterprise software space, specifically SAP, but they work with other enterprise tech platforms as well. Rather than features and benefits, we used a variety of content, um, news, of course, press releases, articles, blog posts, and we made sure these got populated throughout channels read by the SAP ecosystem whether it's customers, implementers of SAP, or the SAP global team themselves. It's proved to be extremely effective. Um, over several years working with them, sales have doubled year over year. People get very tired of chest beating. And I should add that these guys, I mean, they probably would have loved to get the New York Times or Wall Street Journal. Having said that, I don't know if that quite would have, would have quite moved the needle as much as media that was actually easier to get, yet was more relevant to the, the, their customers. We do a lot of work in cybersecurity, as you might imagine. It's a pretty hot field these, these days. Uh, you know, we're surrounded by threats, whether it's from hackers or from state-sponsored, you know, cyber criminals. There's, you know, every day in the news, it seems like there's the next hack. So it's maybe opportunistic. There are ways to get attention for your clients, but at the same time, it's very competitive. There's a lot of cybersecurity startups out there and a lot of cybersecurity tech companies. One thing we've done is something called newsjacking, where you scour the headlines, and then if something is breaking news, you try to insert your client into the story by working with them to quickly develop some kind of statement or perspective on that hack. And in most cases, after the first round of stories, there's gonna be additional stories and reporting. Uh, so we get our clients mentioned as experts. Well, there's a really good book that came out a couple of years ago, I think it was, it's called Play Bigger, written by the uh, journalist Kevin Maney. He's a pretty famous journalist and co-authored by principles of a consulting group of the same name, Play Bigger. And it's about identifying a category and doing what they call category engineering to make sure that your company is front and center and kind of owns that category. So in B2B, think of the big names that jump out. Salesforce uh, is one, of course, WeWork. GitHub, if you're talking about code that's stored in the cloud, Slack as a communications tool. These are companies that were able to kind of put themselves at the head of the pack by kind of owning a category. So-called category kings own 74% of the markets they compete in. So we try to apply these lessons to our clients as well.